by and large in India is something that we tend to think as you know it's not very common. But if we look at it closely, there did exist you know a tradition of painting portraits, but it was restricted to a select group of people or within a select social context, which was the royalty. The king's commissioned portraits, especially if you look at the miniature paintings, be it in the Mughal courts or you know, in the Rajput courts, they served a particular purpose. One was, of course, capturing the likeness of, of the person, but there was another complex meaning to it, which was to circulate it amongst the courtiers, to circulate it amongst the other kings uh, who were their alliances, or they wanted an alliance with it, and convey a message that I am powerful, or I'm seeking your loyalty and build in a network. Similarly, when we look at the portraits in context of uh, you know, what we have in the exhibition, that is of Benjamin Hudson, Robert Holm, or Rabalal Rehman, they all have a different story behind it. They're not just about capturing the likeness. It's just not about you know uh, showing that they had a lot of uh, skill or they were about you know capturing the detailing or texture quality for instance when you talk about robert Holm, he was appointed to document the war of tipu sultan it's quite strange at one hand the british are engaging in a war but they have an artist following around their camps and their you know their movement documenting the war as as a moment in in history as a moment of recording that particular thing. On the other hand, you have Benjamin Hudson who was largely working out of Bengal and he captured or he painted the royalty. And there you see the tone or, or the story or the emotions are slightly different. It is about the personality, it is about the Nawabs or it could be about you know the landed gentry and they are about individuals, it is about showing you know, the splendor of their costumes, of, of the jewelry that they work. On the third hand, you have a painter like Abalal Rehman. The particular portrait which we're talking about is something that he painted when he was 60 years old. By that time in his life, he, had, he was no longer the court painter. So what does a painter do when he's no longer you know, employed successfully? He still is making a painting, he's still making a portrait. And there's a difference. It's a very sensitive portrait of a woman, possibly his mother, his wife, or somebody that he knew about, who posed for it, who sat for this portrait. And he makes a, a, a very sensitive study of that woman. You know, it's a woman without jewelry. It's a woman without the silks or so the precious things that you associate with. And here then he focuses on the persona. Raja Ravi Varma is an extremely significant figure in Indian art uh, for the kind of innovations that he brought. He adopted the Western oil technique and uh, quite remarkably applied them to Indian mythological and religious subjects and the gods and goddesses that he painted in fact came to define um, Hindu imagination, if you will, for the subsequent century and more. He also painted a lot of commissioned portraits of royalty and other nobility and his style became so popular, particularly after calendar prints of his works began to be available and that were really cheap and affordable, uh, which were, they were printed at his own printing press in Lonavla. Once these came out, his works grew so popular that this style became very popular. So in his wake, uh, an almost a veritable school evolved that is today loosely called the Ravi Verma School because of um, its fidelity to what we could define as the Ravi Varma style. Most works attributed to the Ravi Varma school often do not show his high level of um, sheer facility with oil or painting in the realist language. But this work here is quite remarkable. Uh, the likeness to the sitter is photographic almost, it's done extremely well. 
the oil is painted very evenly and across the different parts of the figure and there's extremely fine detail attention to jewelry and clothing and it would almost be attributed to the artist himself but for the fact that it is in sign and Ravi Varma was always very careful to sign all of his works. The figure was a royal personage. He wears his royal medallions. One is to Queen Victoria and there's another order of star or something that he wears on his breast. He has his arm on an ornate table that's carved and the background is kept dark. To better illustrate the figure, he almost seems to emerge from it. This would almost be a Ravi Varma painting if we didn't for a fact know that this is someone who has trained either under him or has followed his work very closely but is not the artist himself because it isn't signed.